right, it's time to build this bad boy. Hey guys, welcome back to Tamiya Legends and once again thank you for stopping by. So in this video we're going to get the TCO1 fully built, um, obviously not the body shell because that's very involved, but we'll get the full chassis built with all the electrics in and working. And uh, to say I'm excited about this one would be an understatement because this is a completely brand new chassis to me. So really looking forward to it. But before we get into it, just again a massive thank you to Yoro RC for sponsoring today's video. Um, our 5% Tamiya Legends promo code and the link to Yoro RC's website is in the description of this video. Yoro RC can also be found obviously on their main website which is awesome but they're also on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all the normal social media platforms. So a massive thank you to Yoro RC again. Right, let's build this. Right, so that's step two and three done. Step two is to fit these um, front mounts for the arms. You actually have to cement two nuts into there. Well, you don't you, you do it at the same time as you fit in the pivots and then the two pivots go either side. Step three is to do the or make up the front um, arms. So you've got a metal ball that clips into there, you've got double ended um, ball ends and then you've got the other end of the pivot mount on a shaft all the way through. So step four is to put that all together onto the chassis now. Right, so that's the lower front arms on either side. It's a little bit of work in that just to get to that stage actually. Um, yeah, it's very different. Um, so stages five, six and seven is basically just repeating the same process but on the rear end. So let's get cracking with that. Right, so that's up to stage seven complete. And obviously I've just got the front and back arms on. Um, it's all very smooth and um, it's all very precise. You can kind of tell that. And there's a lot of adjustment on the arms with these grub screws to set your ride height and things like that. So looking at the manual now, we skip and it's time to fit the um, steering server. So I'm gonna have to set my radio set up and um, get it all um, centered. Right, so at this stage, I'll just show you what electrics are going in. So I'll be running it on 2S. I've got, got this um, Gull brushed motor. It's 21 turn, it's quick. Um, Hobbywing 1060. And this is the new, I believe it's STP. Yeah, STP, low profile servo. So that's the first time out for this servo. And let me just, I've got it all connected. This was about, I think it was about 35 pounds, this servo. Um, Metal gears, high torque and stuff. I don't know much about servos, but um, yeah, it seems to do the trick. Obviously we built the um, servo server up now. Um, so looking at instructions, we're on to step nine, which is to basically fit the steering servo into the chassis, but at the same time, put the electronic speed controller and receiver in position. So we'll get on with that now. Right, well this bit was fun. <laughs> I know I've, uh, everyone said it's tight in there, but uh, yeah, it's tighter than I thought it would be. So what I did, I've obviously got the um, steering so servos low profile in position. And then as I say, we're using a Hobbywing 1060, so no problems there. But I wanted to go with, um, of the first receiver I'd fitted, behind those wires, um, was an antennaless tactic one. And it's bigger than that, but not by much. But it had to go lengthways. Uh, and I wasn't sure, so what I had to just I had to mock up the motor mount very quickly, um, just so I can see where I could see where the motor fits, which is down here, and how how much room I had. And believe it or not, that although that other the receiver isn't much bigger than that one, it wouldn't fit. So I've swapped it out. Um, this is another tactic, what antennaless one, um, which it has to be for me because. Um, I've got to tidy all those wires up and there's not going to be much room for an antenna in there. Wow, that was fun. So I had to plug it all back in and um, reset this steering server um, to neutral. But um, yeah, wow. So I'm guessing the instructions are not that clear. Um, after this stage now, it just tells you to go to um, the motor mount section and start building that up. But I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to tidy the wiring up best I can. The problem is you don't know what else has got to go in there yet. Yeah. Mm, da, 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 da. 
Or maybe, no, in fact, maybe I'll wait until I get the motor all in position and then we can have a look at the tidying the wiring up. Damn, this is fun. Right, next up, so it's obviously your motor mount. I've got a flange bearing on this side, um, normal bearing on that side. I had to take the motor plate back off, unfortunately, because there's two captive nuts that fit in the bottom and there's some little plastic spacers. So I had to take that back off to get into it. And then you've got your... I don't know what you call that, where you obviously one of your prop shafts going. There's two shims that go on, and then that goes all the way through. No, wrong way. That goes this way. Sorry, I'm doing this behind the camera. Like that. I'll just push that bearing back in. So that's, that's that bit. So next stage now is to fit the spur gear. And fit the spur gear arrangement, and then the motor goes on. Right, so that's that. Pretty cool how it all goes together, actually. So, obviously, you've got to line up your spur and your pin, but you've also got to get the meshing correct at this stage. That feels pretty good, to be honest. We've got about a mil, a mil gap from the point of the pinion to of going into the spur. Which, it, to me, I, I always do it by feel. Um, when it's tight, you can feel it's tight. Obviously, you're fighting against the magnets in the motor, but... Um, yeah, it feels pretty good. So, yeah, next stage now, there's a plastic cover that goes over that, and then the whole um, motor mount goes in the car. So we'll get that done next, because I would imagine we can tidy the wiring up on the chassis then. Right, after a lot of messing around, I think I've done it. Uh, I don't want to keep stating the obvious, but boy, it's tight in there. Um, that's pretty crazy. So... Yeah, so what have I done since? So obviously the motor section's completely in, and then this gives you the opportunity to sort of sort your wiring out, which is not the easiest thing in the world. So you get this little plastic bridge here that goes on. So you obviously got to make sure your wires are below that. And then really the only space you've got is here. So you've got to just tuck it all down out of the way, and your battery, I've just got, a, well, I'm, I've obviously got the battery goes roughly there, so I've just got enough, and I'm hoping these wires aren't going to get in the way. There's, it's not a criticism as such, but there's in the instructions, there's no sort of wiring diagrams to where you you feed your wires and the best place to do it. Uh, and obviously, you're going to keep adding to it, so you you don't actually know if what you've done now is correct or is this going to be in the way of anything. If that makes sense, um, the switch actually does go on the outside. Um, by the manual um, so yeah we're good to go so if I just turn transmitter on and where are we switch so we're good there and then we've got the steer obviously we haven't got steering but that's in place and then we have got the motor don't know if it's going in the right direction oh actually we don't know if the steering's in the right direction yet So that's about as far, well that's all we can do isn't it at this stage, just turn this off. So yeah, that's a hell of a mission, so um, I've no idea what's next but I'll disconnect this battery and uh, we'll uh, get going again. Right, so next stage was to make the front and back um, gearbox covers I guess you could call them. Um, lots of ball end joints on them with uh, nuts underneath and then you've got your suspension, pivot mounts, whatever it's called. Um, and then get the same on the rear, although obviously it's a different shape. And that's stage 21 finished, which was just to make the steering assembly up. Um, yeah, there was no bearings in the kit for that, it's bronze bushes. Um, but I'm gonna, I've just I've put them on. I don't, I'm not gonna run it enough for that to uh, be a problem, but you get, you see how it works. And uh, it still feels very precise actually. Um, it's Everything's a really tight fit, it's nice. Right, we're up to stage 24 now. So that's both the um, gear oil diffs made, um, which takes a little bit of time. But um, yeah, they're, they're good and they feel great. Um, I like oil diffs. And then we've got the two sort of prop shaft arrangements and we also had to build a steering turnbuckle up. Now in stage 24, we go back to the front end 
and we fit the diff but obviously the prop shaft with the drive shaft sorry the prop shaft and the cup and we fit the steering linkage on and then the main cover goes on and then it looks like we just do exactly the same on the rear so let's get that stage done just thought I'd show you quickly before I put the top on how that goes so this cup actually goes at an angle so if I press it down that's the angle it goes at which is interesting you can see why you're probably are better off using universal prop shafts for it if they do it I would imagine they do as a hop up because uh, there is a fair bit of angle there all the time so I've done that the steering link which linkage is on obviously the diffs in so now it's just a case of putting that top on right so that's the front and back end sealed um, there's a whole lot of screws that go in there. I think there's about eight in uh, each section and take some screwing in but uh, yeah that's it all pretty much sealed now and at least I now know that my radio gear is okay this did help to clamp the wires down even more but it is kind of putting a bit of pressure on the receiver wires uh, but it is what it is it's tight so yeah front end you've seen the only other thing we added we added an extra ball joint on the rear and we've put this this little arm on here for the will be that'll be towing won't it on the rear but it's obviously non-adjustable um so you'd have to buy a turnbuckle set to get it adjustable um yeah so it's that's basically that what a thing there's a bit of weight in it as well you know there is definitely a bit of weight in it so yeah i'll uh let's get cracking again right so that's the front end complete all the arms are on um drive shafts are in and you can see how the pivot things work for the suspension with the shocks to go here now all pretty smooth rear ends it's pretty generic front and back so yeah it's exactly the same and as I say it all feels great so um, yeah I'm enjoying this so next up now is to build the shocks up and then we'll, we'll just get them straight on the car right that's the shocks made up and fitted Looks uh, looks pretty cool, gotta be honest. Um, this whole car's a touring car basically, so it all needs setting up properly before I run it. So I've just put the, the biggest shock spacers on just to take up the slack for now, till obviously we, we start setting it up. But um, you get the idea. And uh, as I say, front and back. Very cool indeed. I'm really liking it. Right, let's get very, uh, whatever else is to go on it. Right, so we've got both battery straps on now. So they just bolt down four bolts and then there's two body clips just pull out and then that tray. And you're supposed to put padding in there, but I'm gonna try my own batteries in there first before I do that. Um, and then we've got the rear diffuser. Now again, this is this just belongs to when you're putting the, um, what do you call it, the Formula E shell on it. You don't have that on if you're doing touring car. And same goes for the big front bumper. Um, that's again just for the Formula E, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's taking shape now. So next stage is uh, I'll just put the standard kit wheels and tyres on, and um, then we can put a battery in it and just uh, make sure everything's going in the right direction. And there we have it. What a good-looking chassis that is. <laughs> kind of uh, again, it's been said before, but you kind of don't need to put a body shell on it, do you? Obviously you do, but. You know what I'm saying? That's a seriously nice looking thing. Um, all the suspension working. The settings, the ma oops, the manual settings of the setup of the car looks pretty good actually, straight out of the box. The only thing I, I can say I have to change, the front wheels are towing out slightly, which is not a bad thing. You can run it like that, but um, I think I'll um, run run them at around zero degrees. I think zero, you know, so straight basically and the rears are uh, towing in as they should what an excellent looking thing the diffs are super smooth you know I'm uh, yeah this is uh, this is a hell of a thing those diffs are they feel so sweet what a thing so yeah, we will have to play around with setups and well, not play around, but we'll have to get a setup on it. Now, the eagle eyed of you might have noticed that I've not put body mounts on and I'll explain why now. Right, before I do that, obviously I've just said we'll put some power through it. 
So um, I've taken some steering off of it because I've been told by numerous people, if you have too much steering on this, the drive shafts pop out, um, hence why you really do need a universal joint. But that's what we've got. That servo is nice and quick. I really like that. I've not adjusted the toe in or out yet, but that's awesome. Um, the tires have come off, so obviously if I was gonna use these, I'd have to glue them, but uh, you get the gist of it. Awesome. I'm a little bit excited. The, uh, is that off? Yeah. The, um, the battery has got some play. Obviously it's a two S so I will get some foam down that before we run it. But, um, yeah, what a thing. That's full weight of it, obviously with the car. It's a heavy thing. It's a very heavy car. Put the camera down a little bit. But that suspension's like, it's about right, to be honest. It looks like you can just really uh, take it straight out, to be honest, apart from that toe on the front. My word, I'm loving the look of this thing. Well, what a build that was. I'm gonna use a different word. Some of you who criticize my wording will like this. Normally I would say, what would I normally say? Super chuffed with this, super excited about this build. Oh, this build was superb. But in actual fact, I'm going to say, this build was exceptional for me. And the reason behind that is it's the newest, most modern Tamiya chassis I built by a long while, um, to be fair. And I really enjoyed it. It's, um, it's a quality piece of kit. Uh, <laughs> I really, really, really like it. Um, so... Yeah, well, as I said, diffs, super smooth, silky smooth. The overall drive just feels great. Steering looks sharp. Suspension's awesome. As I say, the setup looks like it's almost there straight out of the box. Um, but I will probably adjust the towing on the front. I keep saying that, don't I? Um, what a thing. So the reason I've not put any body mounts on it is because, a couple of reasons, my decals for this special livery I'm doing on this car have not arrived and I do need some paint as well. So I thought, rather than just have this sitting, because I really want to run this now, so what I'm going to do is, in the next video, we'll run this. But at the beginning of it, I'll do it into the touring car conversion. So the front diffuse, the back diffuser will come off, the front bumper will come off, a proper touring car bumper, which you get in the kit with a foam bumper and you get different body mounts. So we'll change it over to that. I'm gonna see if I can fit my old, what you, if you remember the Bumblebee shell, the Honda NSX speed run shell. Yeah, I've still got that downstairs. I don't mind putting a couple extra holes in there. So I thought we could um, try fit that shell to it. Um, and we'll put some Sorex touring car wheels and tires on pre-glued, all that stuff. Um, Cause these would be useless to be honest. Um, and then we'll whiz it out and um, and then I'm not bothered about wrecking the shell. Do you know, if I, if I had the Formula E shell on it, I'd be, yeah, it, it, it won't, it, it'd spoil it for me. Whereas, yeah, with the, an old shell on, not a problem at all, and we can see what the chassis is like. So that's the plan with that. And then we'll do another video afterwards doing the full Formula E body set, bo body, body set. What a thing. If you've already got one, you know what I'm talking about, obviously, but um, yeah, superb. Oh, I said superb. That'll be worth the thumbs down. So yeah, I just want to sit here and look at this, but that's probably not what you want me to do. So I best end this video here. I think I've covered everything. Absolutely superb. So a massive thank you to Yaro RC um, for sponsoring this video. Um, I can't honestly thank you enough and again a massive thank you to all you watching it's massively appreciated if you are new to this channel and this is the first time you've seen what we do if you could please give this video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification for our weekly videos because we do try to put two or three videos out every week without fail this is it this is really 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 cool anyway my friends um Happy ass seeing.